This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. In this video, we are going to discuss the timer trigger in Google Tag Manager. Again, this is a very, very simple concept or is it? So what are we going to cover? We are going to cover how to create a basic timer trigger in Google Tag Manager. We are going to understand the basic applications of timer trigger. We are going to understand advanced applications of timer trigger. And we are going to understand the condition of enable this trigger when all these conditions are true. All right, so let's get started. Before moving further, I would like to invite you to join our group on Facebook, the Digital Optimization League. The mission of this group is to solve any questions pertaining to digital analytics and optimization, discover and promote new talent and share ideas and create an impact in the digital analytics community. All right. So just uh, follow this link group slash data Vinci DOA. Click on join group and I will approve your request. So we'll now see how to create a basic timer trigger in Google Tag Manager. So just click on triggers, click on new. Trigger configuration timer. Okay. So you will have these three fields, event name, interval and limit. You can keep event name as TVM timer only until unless you feel that this name conflicts with any other name that is also in the name of timer and it's, uh, you know, conflicting with this default setting. Uh, I have not encountered such a situation in uh, uh, my experience. So in 99% of the cases, this would not require any modifications. So just keep this as is. Interval is very easy to understand at what intervals do you want to fire the timer trigger? Do you want to fire it at uh, every five seconds, every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds? So depending on that, you just need to put the duration over here. So for this test case, just uh, let's put this for uh, five seconds. Okay, that will be 5000 milliseconds, right? Limit is how many times do you want to fire this timer on a particular page after the initial page load? So do you want to fire it two times, three times? So it depends upon your use cases. In simple use cases, you would uh, only keep the limit as one. But uh, in advanced use cases, you might need to keep this uh, at multiple times, depending upon uh, what you want to check and how the data layer or the various variables are getting updated with each timer trigger. Okay. So for this illustration, I'll keep it two so that we can see that it's firing twice, right? Uh, for this one, let's just uh, select page URL and we want to fire it on all pages. Okay. So just select uh, page URL contains slash. So that would qualify almost all the pages. We will discuss this condition and this condition in some time. Okay. So let's just call it uh, basic five second uh, timer. Okay and uh, in tags so let's uh, create a facebook tag that uh, fires when the user has spent five seconds on the page Okay, so let's just review this. Right, so I expect that uh, there should be a timer event here, right? The first one came. So Facebook five second tag. And if we look at Omnibug, then here upon 10 seconds, which has already passed. So let me just refresh it. So the five second timer is working, right? So this is how a basic timer can be created. Some use cases can be that, uh, let's say you have a blog and you want to call certain users who are spending at least 20 seconds on a page as uh, engaged users, right? So you can fire a uh, face marketing or analytics pixel based on this engagement. And further, you can also create your audiences uh, based on this uh, interaction that you are tracking right so now uh, let's look at an advanced case okay so let's assume that this advanced case is a google optimize experiment okay and the hypothesis of this experiment is that if we add pretty please under the book a call button then the conversion rate is going to improve okay so how do we do this so we are going to do this through a javascript where the javascript would add a text pretty please after this uh, book a call loads okay now the challenge is that when the page loads this book a call button is not available this book a call button gets available after some time so let me show you what do i mean by this 
So if I refresh this, you see that the book a call button is not there and now it comes. Okay. But optimize is supposed to fire before the page like properly loads. And uh, since this page is changing after optimize has fired, so optimize is not able to detect this and optimize would not be able to add the content after this particular uh, uh, HTML uh, element that we have. Okay, so there can be multiple uh, solutions to this. I'm not saying that this cannot be done directly within Optimize, but let's say that uh, we do not want to do this from Optimize and rather what we want to do is uh, use a combination of Google uh, Tag Manager to drive this. Okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, we are going to host only one script in Optimize and that script would decide that whether a session is part of the experiment or not so let's assume that we are going to add just this simple script in optimize that data layer dot push test equals yes right so we will just push this test variable into optimize and if this is yes that means the session was part of the experiment if yes is not there then that means the session was not part of the experiment this value would be utilized by Google Tag Manager so such that if Google Tag Manager finds the value of uh, yes for test then tag manager would do something okay and what that thing is that we are going to add pretty please so i have created a script for pretty please so if that script gets executed it will look something like this okay just wait yeah so if the script gets executed it will look something like this so we are going to host this uh, script in google tag manager only in those cases where value of test is found as yes okay now as this video is about timer so what we are going to do we are going to set a timer that runs every second for the first 10 seconds and that timer would detect that uh, this is yes right and that timer would also detect that uh, this particular element is present and then timer would append this uh, uh, text pretty please to that element right now we also want to make sure that once this text has been added then timer does not keep on adding the text after every iteration so for that we, we are going to add another uh, script to to the tag that we are going to create to this uh, custom uh, javascript such that uh, that script prevents the adding of this text once it has been added so that is also very easy to do so just let's have a look at it so if i click on pretty please right so this is a script that i have created and what i have added additionally over here is data layer dot push stop equals yes so after this script has been uh, uh, executed so the test has been text has been added so it will also push stop equals yes into the data layer so now what we can do let's create a timer okay so let's look at the condition of this timer so this timer is going to fire every second thousand every second this is going to fire uh, 10 times right this is just going to fire on all the pages and here what we'll do first we will add the uh, test dl contains yes right and the other condition that we are going to add is that uh, stop stop dl so i have already created the variable for stop here that we are putting uh, does not contain yes Okay, so let's just save this and refresh the page. So the first thing that we are going to do is just assume that this page has Google Optimize and this uh, session is part of the experiment and just uh, we ourselves will pass uh, the data layer test equals yes. Okay, so we are now debugging this site. Again, a reminder that we are going to host the script that qualifies a session as part of the experiment in Google Optimize. And again, a reminder that that script does nothing, but it just pushes a data layer element and that data layer element when it's yes, then Google Tag Manager knows that that script needs to go. Otherwise, it does not do anything. So let's do this thing that if we are not uh, pushing that uh, script, which was simply data layer dot push test equals to yes. So you can see that nothing is coming over here. But if you look at uh, the timer trigger, then it has very much uh, fired every second, 
right so here since we did not put uh, that extra uh, uh, script of data layer dot push nothing happened so let's now refresh it again okay and as you will see the push this this particular uh, button it is it is not yet here but now when it came and uh, we had data layer dot push test equals to yes as well then pretty please also came right so the script checks every second that uh, whether book a call is present or not and as soon as it detects that book a call is present and also it checks that what's the value of test variable then it appends uh, pretty please to the to the book a call okay so uh, this is a good use case where you can combine google tag manager and google optimize and look for certain elements that appear after the initial page load which at times can be challenging to uh, run experiments with uh, google optimize and then you can combine these two tools and use it very intelligently to execute your experiments so uh, i know this is an advanced uh, level use case and many people not, might not be even aware of uh, how google optimize works many people might not yet be aware of what i'm doing with data layer dot push so i have created videos particularly for data layer so that video you can check i have put the description uh, link in the description box below so you can check that but as as we know this is an advanced use case so obviously it is going to be slightly complicated so but uh, you will not be always using the timer trigger the way i have used that in the advanced use case most of the times you would be using this for engagement only but i am just giving you an exemplification that how you can intelligently use this trigger to execute other functions as well okay so let me know in the comment section what do you think of this use case and uh, if you have any questions or anything like that right but otherwise i would like to conclude this uh, video at this stage uh, i have covered the basic ones i have covered the advanced use case i have covered how to create the trigger how to use the various variables and what you can do with that so if you still have any doubts any questions just let me know i would love to know your feedback uh, till then take care and i will be posting more videos